16-bit computers came along, obviously graphics vastly improved. You know, you had higher resolution, you had more colours, and obviously the sound as well uh, would generally improve. Um, but the problem with that is the early games uh, in the sort of 16-bit era. A lot of these games, it was all about graphical, you know, tricks, trickery. They looked amazing, um, fantastic sound, and in some cases, they forgot to add gameplay. So this video, I am going to take a look at five video games that look awesome and are actually shite because of uh, they're unplayable or whatever. Now there are a couple of uh, honourable mentions which I didn't include in this. The most obvious would be Rise of the Robots and probably Terminator 2. Both these games, uh, they were hyped beyond belief. They look amazing and are absolutely pish. So anyway, let's take a look at five Amiga games that look amazing but aren't actually very good. Right, okay, kicking things off, we have Crazy Cars by Titus. Now, if you were uh, a 16-bit owner in the early days, Titus are slightly legendary for all the wrong reasons, um, as will become apparent very, very shortly. Now, the thing is, if you just moved from a Spectrum or a C64 and loaded up this game, your, your ears would have just been blown away with this awesome, real music. And a rather nice uh, picture of a Lamborghini, I think it is, or is that a Ferrari? I'm not quite sure. So anyway, yep, now, yeah, uh, okay, you can pick a Mercedes. Let's crack on. This is bound to be exciting. Challenge Florida. Not quite sure what the blue's got to do with it, but anyway. And then the game kicks in. Now, I don't know, is that supposed to be Disneyland in the background? The Magic Castle? I'm not quite sure. Yeah, now early 8-bit games used to use this sort of stripy road um, pretty much to try and replicate a feeling of speed. Now there was a reason for that, it was because they simply were not powerful enough to actually, you know, to have roadside obstacles. You would think with a 16-bit machine it would have at least tried, but uh, 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 no, they've gone for this horrible uh, ball blazer-esque road, uh, for some odd reason your car seems to jump, don't know why, it just judders along, the enemies, the enemy cars just kind of bound into view, I mean I don't know what the kind of frames per second are, there's very very little uh, frames of animation. If you look at the uh, the roadside obstacles, I think there's one, two, three, there's about three uh, steps of animation in it. When you're going a bit slower, it does look slightly better. But when you're going fast, it is just hideously jerky looking. The sound, well, okay, we could be picky and see the sound is awful. The sound is awful, <laughs> um, but yeah. And as for the green and blue at the side of the road, is this like Chernobyl? Are you driving through some sort of a? Uh, radioactive waste or is it a volcano or something? I don't know. This is apparently New York. Now you'll notice there there was a slight delay while it loaded the next level. Now normally when a game loads it's because there's going to be something to look forward to. And look at it. It's the same game. They've changed the colours. There's a slight difference in the background. I'm actually getting quite angry at this. There's a slight, you know, the backgrounds look slightly different. Now I've got to say I actually edited the, uh, the loading time, because I didn't think it was, you know, I want to crack on with the video. Look at it, I mean your car's bouncing about, you'll see there when you go so slow, the cars come up from behind you, you cannot avoid them, they bar into the back of you and they make you jump up in the air. Where's the, where's the, uh, the Lamborghini, where's the Ferrari? I don't want to drive a Mercedes. Seriously, what the hell were they thinking? Now, you'd think, well, they're going to get it right next time. No, 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 no. Crazy Cars 2 is... If this was rated out of 100, I would probably give it... 1. And that would be for the, the opening intro, the, the sampled sound effect, or sampled music. The sequel would probably get 3.5 out of 100. It is just shocking. Um, there's other games that they came up with, Fire and Forget amongst others, but uh, 
seriously, crazy cars, it is just awful, absolutely awful. Right, if you're a, a regular to my channel, you will be extremely familiar with this game. Now, this is a... Uh, <laughs> I have got some awful memories of this game for the simple reason it was the very, very first 16-bit game that I bought. And it was for that reason, that picture of that dragon, that absolutely sold it to me. I did actually get it in Atari ST, um, but this is Amiga 1, and trust me, the Atari ST one is just as bad as this one. Pause the game, and you would buy it in a second. Graphics are lovely, really well, hand-drawn, colourful looking graphics. What more do you want? So why is this game on this uh, video, I hear you ask? It's the controls. They have uh, used, they've used a, a mix between mouse control and joystick. Now technically you can play the whole game using mouse. Now I think the reason they did this was because Psygnosis were one of the first uh, companies to sort of, now I use the word embrace very lightly, they embraced the technology and advances of 16-bit technology, i.e. the mouse. They thought, let's make a fantastic looking game um, and we'll make it mouse controlled. Now, primarily, I would not see that as a problem, but it, it's an arcade game. What they should have done here is allow you to control it with a joystick uh, and then, you know, you press fire button to attack, whatever. Happy days, press up to jump, whatever. They could have, you know, quite easily have come up with something like every other platform game came up with. But no, 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 Psygnosis, Psygnosis even, wanted to stick to this absolutely ridiculous uh, control system. Now you'll see here, now, fortunately, I have played, or maybe unfortunately for me, uh, unfortunately, I've played this game before, so I do know what's coming. It's one of these ridiculously unfair games, a bit like Rick Dangerous, where you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen, and the only way you can possibly avoid a baddie is if you've already died and you know what's coming. So this is effectively a, a memory game. Now, it doesn't just stop there. Look at that. Look at the animation. <laughs> I don't know how many frames of animation there is. It's just absolutely god awful. Look at that when he's walking. And what what makes me annoyed even more is if the game had looked crap, you know what? You could have just said, yeah, it's a god awful game. But somebody, I don't know who the graphic artist was in this game, somebody has obviously gone a lot of bother, come up with the graphics, and then somebody has just stuck in this absolutely bloody woeful uh, control system. It's jerky. You've also got to, uh, it, when you press a button, there's about mm, two and a half to three second gap be before it actually reacts. So you really need to know what's coming on the screen that you have not been to, so that you can press the correct button. Now, I was not walking left there, it just kept, when I came down the ladder, for some strange reason, it just kept walking left. <laughs> it's just so unfair. It is ridiculous, and it annoys me because I paid £45 for this game. £45! Seriously! And when I think back now, um, I would have taken my money back, gone back, taken my receipt, but back in the day, you never thought for one second you could get money back on a shit game. And this will demonstrate here, there you go. Boom, arrow, no chance. There you go, that's Barbarian by Psygnosis. Right, this one, I feel slightly guilty putting this one in amongst uh, the company of these other games we're about to look at. Because, you know what? This, well, the other games look fine. This game looks amazing. It's, the control system is fine. It's absolutely fine. But you know what? It's just impossible. It is absolutely impossible. I have play, been playing this game on and off since... I don't know, 1989, whatever that is, 1993. I've been playing this game on and off for 30 years, and I have never once got to the end of level 1. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, wait a minute, main meister, it's because you're pissed at games. You know what? You'd be partly right, but it's also because it's impossible. 
as I will hopefully demonstrate, well I'm not hopefully going to demonstrate, I am going to demonstrate it because I've never completed a level on this yet. You get so far, you've got a ridiculously uh, strict time limit, so, so far so good. Now there's a thing that's going to appear in a second, which you'll see, which just makes it so damn frustrating, and not in a good way. That thing, that little circle surrounded well, with four little purple balls, it just appears, you can't shoot it, well you can shoot it, but you certainly can't kill it, there it is again, the only way to get rid of it is to avoid it, and it means going back and forwards like I've had to do there, meanwhile the timer is ticking down. And yet it just throws you right back, I mean seriously, it's just, it's you know what, it's probably, it's probably the most frustrating video game on the Amiga that I've ever played, it just, it's clunky, it's, there's a, not, I wouldn't say there's any inertia, but it just takes, there's a bit of delay, you know, between kind of walking, or maybe that's not entirely true, but just the whole control system, the fact that everything seems to take time, I don't know whether it's because of the, the graphics, whatever, I don't know. <laughs> Back to square one again. Avoid that purple thing. Now, you know what, if they just made it, there you go, I'm going to run out of time, I've got 50 odd seconds, well, 50 nebulous seconds. And you've always got to, you can't just rush to the top, you've always got to be mindful of that stupid thing that comes in from the side, like that. And I'm going to die. There you go, back to the start. Game over. Well, not game over, you've got another attempt at it. And it really annoys me that they've, they've made this game like this, because it does look nice if he had just, if he'd got rid of that stupid thing, that, it would have made the game infinitely easier, and it would have made it enjoyable. But as it stands, it is just one incredibly frustrating experience. The thing is, I'm sure this got really, really good ratings, and it is a nice looking game, but it's just damned frustrating. And it's all about a meme in the game, ah oh, there you go, back again. And again, like the game I've just looked at, there are bits where you would not be able to avoid, other than you die and then you go back to the start. There you go, I'm right at the very, very start again. With a wee bit tweaking, this could have been a fun game. There we go, I'm going to die. Oh, skinny my teeth. <laughs> now, you know what? I might be playing this game all wrong. If I am, I absolutely apologise. Somebody tell me I'm playing it wrong. Um, yeah, I know I'm not a good games player. There we go, I'm just about to die. Back to the start, I've got, what, I don't know, 128 uh, nebulous settings. And I'm going to, oh, there you go, right down to the bottom again. I don't actually know if there is a second level. <laughs> Possibly not. <laughs> oh, there we go, it's been kind to me. Trust me, if you think I'm pushing this game, try it for yourself, then decide. Yeah, anyway, that is nebulous. Right, I've featured this game multiple times, I've done it in live streams. This was a game that I bought uh, back whenever it came out, 1988 I think it was. I paid, I don't know, 30 quid for it. Uh, it looks amazing, the graphics look incredible, and then they start moving. Oh dear, look at that scrolling. Now, this is, this is a 16-bit machine. This is a game, this is a machine that was able to put out an arcade perfect Marble Madness, probably two, three years before this came out. Music, it's alright. Um, graphics, statically wise, it looks really good. Yeah, Street Fighter in the arcades wasn't a, wasn't a particularly good game. 
unfortunately it changed a lot when the second one came out. But this is just awful. Look at the scrolling, look at the movement. <laughs> it's hideous. How or why somebody actually thought that this game warranted a release. Now I have to say my skills have uh, deserted me because when I bought this 30 odd years ago, 30, yeah 30 years ago, um, 31 years ago, whatever it was, I completed it in my first go. Now you'll look there, look at when I'm kicking, my leg goes from down on the ground to instantly at 90 degrees, there is no animation to speak of. It's like a comic book. It's comically laughable, that is about the only... Yeah, just... Terrible! I don't know if you can turn the music off. Uh, it would be nice to get some sound effects there again. It's not gonna, uh, It's not gonna improve this game at all. I've no idea how this rated back in the day on magazines, or in magazines I should say. But it's just, it's woeful. Now sadly, the games that I have kind of featured in this, at least three of them, Crazy Cars, a uh, Barbarian, and this, I mean Nebulous came later on, these were all, uh, they were fairly early games, so you're probably thinking, well wait a minute me Meister, you've been a bit, you've been a bit harsh here, but you know what, you know, there was a lot of really good games came out, early doors, so they knew full well what this machine was capable of, and yet they thought nothing of putting out a game like this, which is just shoddy. Even the 8-bit machines are not as bad as this. I would rather play the ZX81 version of uh, Street Fighter had it been released, and I guarantee it would not have been as bad as this. There is absolutely no skill involved. The number of moves is very limited. Now you might be saying, well that's a bit unfair because it's a joystick. But you know what, there has been other beat em ups that have come out. Um, and they've been able to pull it off. I'm not really faulting this. I'm not faulting this for the control system. It's just the diabolical scrolling and the even worse animation. Just absolutely horrendous. If you just lashed out, what, I don't know, 400 pounds on a brand new Amiga, like I did, um, you can understand why you would be slightly annoyed when you powered this up and you just lashed out, I don't know what it was, 24.99, 34.99, I can't remember how much this cost, it was full price. <laughs> it's just, it's, it has got absolutely nothing. I've got nothing positive to say about this. And I can honestly say, I believe I ended up using, well it wasn't actually me, it was my mate, because we both, we basically bought the game between us, he ended up using it as a blank disc. Say no more. So that is a Street Fighter. Shite, shite, shite. And the last one is by Psygnosis again. Can you see a pattern forming here? This is Shadow of the Beast. Now I'm just going to be quiet for a second and let you enjoy the, I've got to say, amazing, amazing sound. Now this was a game that used to be uh, used by shops promote the Amiga, which will be, you know, the reasons for that will become uh, evident very shortly. It's a stunningly sounding game, and the graphics, the static graphics, look awesome. And you're thinking, well again, how on earth can this game possibly be on this list? Again, bear with me, and all the reasons will become clear.
look at the, the number of uh, sort of levels of parallax scrolling, you know, technically this was an absolute masterpiece. And I've said this before, I am convinced when uh, Psygnosis were having their sort of final team meeting, they were saying, right, okay, we're, we're going to release next week, guys. Uh, Jim, have you got the graphics? Yep, spot on, boss. Oh, wow, they look awesome. Sound, yep, David, David Whitaker, by the way. Um, absolutely awesome job in the sound. Fantastic. Right, we've done the programming. Um, gameplay, yep, gameplay all, all tight, lads. Gameplay? Anybody? What do you mean nobody was doing the gameplay? Oh, you're having a giraffe. Right, you've got half a day. Get the gameplay in. It doesn't matter about making it interesting. You pre you run left to right, press the fire button. You just look, don't bother about spells. Press fire button, you punch whatever it is. It doesn't matter. You press the fire button, you punch the baddie. They'll never know. Now this game did go on to spawn two sequels. The second one, uh, I think, was... Well, it was a lot better than this, but it would not be difficult. And I think the third one, I'm not really familiar with the third one, but I know Lacosa has played all three, and I'm sure he kind of says the third one is not actually too bad. Again, looking at it. <laughs> yep, you punch them. Boof. Now, I'm not... The, the, the static graphics, they look like something that Terry... Gilliam would have done out of Monty Python. That's not the criticism. If they'd actually put some moves, weapons, special uh, magic, maybe there is, I don't know, um, then it might have been better, but no, 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 they've just put left to right and punch. Now it looks like I'm some kind of devil gamey Gordon, and he punches. Seriously. Why didn't he just go the full hog and put Steven Seagal in, for God's sake? Punch. It's like uh, it's like a kung fu master without the gameplay, but with worse graphics. I think it's a game that my granny, God rest her soul, would have described it as fur coat and no knickers. Now I think you can only you can't punch these. Unfortunately, you can only jump over them. Same with these spiders. Is that a tumbleweed I think going fast? Punch! Punch! Oh strength! Punch! 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 Strength! And I can categorically say you have seen the full extent of the gameplay. Punch! 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 Yeah, at least in Kung Fu Master which came out, I don't know, five years before it actually had you could jump and punch, and you could also kick. Hey, yeah, let's put some nasty eyeballs in and let you punch them. And thankfully, that is the end of the game. So that is five games that looked amazing, and quite frankly, they had a complete lack of any gameplay. Like I said, yep, Nebulous, I do feel slightly unfair having that in. It was a nice game, but it was just too damn difficult. But the other four, have to, sorry, have to be avoided at all costs. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed watching this, and as always, thank you very, very much for watching.